Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So, anyways, I thought that I would do my little fight breakdown and my fight prediction uh, about, you know, how, how I regularly like to do it. You know, when it comes to the mega fights, when it comes to the big fights, and I do consider this upcoming fight a mega fight, or at least a big fight, uh, when it comes down to it, because this is uh, <laughs> this is going to be a very big barometer test, in my opinion, for both fighters, but especially Mr. Terrence Crawford. Uh, Terrence Crawford, of course, is, in my opinion, and many people's opinions, one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. There's a certain amount of people that would debate him as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, and I understand, but I can't have Terrence Crawford that high. And the reason why that is is because Terrence Crawford, even though I think that he's a great fighter, I'm a person that is all about results. <laughs> we can sit here and say that, well, I think that Terrence Crawford, I think he's more skilled than this guy, more skilled than this guy, more skilled than this guy. That's great. I think Javante Tank Davis, I think that when I take a look at Javante Tank Davis, I think that potentially he actually is even more skilled than a Terrence Bud Crawford. You know, maybe even more than an Earl Spence Jr. or more talented in certain areas. But am I going to put Javante Tank Davis above a Terrence Bud Crawford or above an Earl Spence Jr. based off of the resume that he has? Absolutely not. Because who really has he beat besides Jose Pedraza and Leo Santa Cruz? It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's the bottom line. I'm a person about results. You can tell me that this person is above this person, but unless I see some tangible evidence, you know, I just can't do that. I can't take that step. It is what it is. You know, even if you think that that's eventually what is going to happen, you know, that's great, but when it comes down to it, like I said, we can't say for sure that some of these fighters are greater than these other fighters until they've been actually tested. You don't know a person within all reality until they have been tested in their life or until they have gone through some type of adversity. That's when you see who a person really is, not when they have basically everything easy in front of them, all right? It is what it is. And for Mr. Terrence Crawford, I like Terrence. I think that he's a great fighter. You know, many people would even go as far to call him an all-time great fighter. But that remains to be seen. And a certain amount of people, they'll disagree. But, you know, Terrence, I understand that he's a multiple weight division champion. And in my opinion, do I think Terrence Crawford has the ability to become an all-time great fighter? No doubt about it. I think that Terrence Crawford, I think that when I take a look at his talent and when I take a look at his boxing ability and his skills... I think that he very well has the degree or the possibility to become debatably later on, at least the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. I have no doubt about that, but I have to see him in the ring with these A-class fighters first, which means what? I need to see you in the ring, not only with Sean Porter, but Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Earl Spence Jr., Jordanus Ugas. And once you're done with that division, if you continue boxing, I would like to see you maybe at 154 against either Brian Gastanio or Jamel Charlo, because those are the only two fighters at 154, in my opinion, right now, that would really be considered a grade. It is what it is. I like Terrence. I think Terrence is a great fighter, but this man almost has 40 fights on his resume, and let's be real, he's fought, like, <laughs> how many legitimate champions throughout his career? I mean, I guess he fought Ricky Burns. You know, he fought, uh, I'm trying to think overall who else, uh, Yuri Arcus Gamboa, Victor Postal, Jeff Horn, Joyous and Dango, and uh, well, that's about it. <laughs> that's really about it, at least when we talk about champions that had the belts at the time and weren't fighting for vacant titles when it comes down to now. If you want to mention other fights, you know, maybe that I'm not mentioning where he defeated guys that once upon a time had a belt, maybe there's a couple that I'm missing, maybe Raimundo Beltran, maybe he won a belt at one weight division, I can't remember. Bottom line is this, <laughs> point, point being is this, when you have 40-something fights on your resume and you're about 35 years old, which is around the age of what Terrence Crawford is, you should have more A-grade fights in your career than what you have. That is the bottom line. Now, at 135 and at 140, he pretty much fought everyone overall that they put in front of him, so I'm not necessarily going to criticize him for that. But when it comes down to it, at the 147-pound division, you decided to re-sign with top rank where none of the other elite welterweights were. And then on top of that, <laughs> when certain opportunities were presented to you, you said that you were not interested in them. Like he said that he was not interested in a Sean Porter fight last year. But this fight overall was ordered by the WBO, and I'm very glad that it was. 
This is a clear A grade fight. And finally, for the first time in Terrence Crawford's career, this is probably a definitive A class fight. Because in my opinion, New York is Gamboa. That probably so far is the best win in Terrence Crawford's career. And Gamboa, even at his best, is a debatable A-class fighter. I'm not even sure if I would rank him as an A-class fighter. It is what it is. Victor Postal is on that line. Meaning what? I think that he <laughs> he kind of is like almost in that same tier as an Adrian Broner. And I don't have Adrian Broner as an A-class fighter. So it is what it is. But when it comes down to it all in all, this is what I'm going to say about Terrence. I think Terrence is a great fighter. But I can't have him any higher than number five on my pound for pound list. And the reason why that is is because his resume is just so poor compared to some of these other guys. All the other guys that I have in my top five pound for pound, all of those guys besides Terrence Crawford have a definitive A-class win on the resume. Whether it be Alexander Usyk defeating Anthony Joshua, who in my opinion was a debatable top 10 pound for pound fighter. Or whether it be Tyson Fury not only defeating Deontay Wilder. Wilder, in my opinion, was never top 10 pound for pound, but Vladimir Klitschko was. And on top of that, Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, would have been top 20 pound for pound when it came down to it. So Tyson Fury, he has to be above Terrence Crawford on my list when it comes down to it. And another one, of course, is Earl Spence Jr. Earl Spence Jr., he defeated Mikey Garcia. He also defeated Kill Brook. He also defeated Sean Porter. And he recently defeated Danny Garcia. So Earl Spence has about four A-class wins in his career. Terrence, <laughs> Terrence has almost double the fights of Earl Spence Jr. And he can't claim that he has even definitive two A-class wins in his career. And when it comes to Canelo Alvarez, I mean, just forget it. It's not even debatable. Canelo Alvarez has so many A-class wins in his career, I can't even keep track. It is what it is. I can't have Terrence above any of those fighters. I think that he's a great fighter. Now, in my opinion... If he beats Sean Porter, would that put him on my list higher? Maybe. Maybe you could argue that he could be above a Tyson Fury. Maybe you could argue that, well, well that would be really about it. <laughs> but when it comes down to it all in all, I'm not even sure if I could place him any higher on my list if he were to win this fight because Sean Porter, even though he is a great fighter, he isn't a champion at this current moment in time. And on top of that, Sean Porter, he already has three losses in his career. So we already know what Sean Porter is. When it came to Tyson Fury defeating Vladimir Klitschko, that was looked at as a very, very big fight. When he fought Deontay Wilder, that was looked at as a very, very big fight. You know, it is what it is. Terrence is now facing Sean Porter, and Sean Porter, he is a great fighter, but we all know who the clear favorite is in this fight. You know, let's keep it real. It is what it is. Don't get me wrong, this is a great fight, like I said. But Terrence Crawford, you know, <laughs> in my opinion... If he wins over Sean Porter, is this going to be enough, in my opinion, to put him as the number one pound for pound fighter? Absolutely not. I'm sorry, but that's just not enough. Sean Porter is a great win. And I'm seeing a certain amount of people predicting that Terrence Crawford will knock out Sean Porter. And I kind of get why, because it kind of just has that intuitive feeling that Terrence Crawford is going to knock out Sean Porter. I get it. Uh, especially because I think a certain amount of people, they take a look at Terrence Crawford when he knocked out Kill Brook and... You know, they basically say, wow, I didn't expect that. Maybe Terrence, maybe he can knock out Sean Porter. I certainly get it, but when it comes down to it, I don't think, not only do I think that Sean Porter has adapted a little bit better as a fighter, but on top of that, it's no offense, but Kelbrick was pretty much done, and he was pretty much mincemeat by the time Terrence Crawford fought him. Everyone pretty much knew that Kelbrick was not the same fighter. It is what it is that he used to be. After that Earl Spence Jr. knockout, also after the Gennady Golovkin knockout, he never really was the same fighter. So it is what it is. But when it comes down to it, just to get to the fight breakdown, who do I personally think is going to win this fight and why? I do have to pick Terrence Bud Crawford. I think that Terrence Bud Crawford, there is a couple faults maybe with him that I could point out, but Terrence really all around is a very, very good fighter. And I've really enjoyed watching Terrence Crawford throughout the years. Of course, he's from my hometown of Omaha, Nebraska. Terrence Crawford, you know, he... Uh, he really has became, in my opinion, a greatly skilled fighter. But I can't necessarily put him on that level to say that he's an all-time great fighter because, once again, I need to see you tested. I need to see you challenged. You know, and some people, of course, they're going to say, oh, well, how can you say that? Well, let me just ask you something. Would you call Niowa Inoue an all-time great fighter? Now, Niowa Inoue, we can call him a great fighter. We can say that he's a very, very good fighter. But until he defeats 
some actual A-class names. I can't say that he's an A-grade fighter because let's be real, who really has Naya Wa Inoue beat? Payano and, you know, some, some of these other English dudes who were decent, but, you know, not necessarily A-grade fighters. Don't get me wrong, he's a great fighter. But an all-time great fighter, I can't put him on that level. It is what it is. It's the same thing with Terrence Crawford. You know, this is really his first step, in my opinion, to see how great Terrence Crawford really is. Now, once again, Sean Porter, he's an elite gatekeeper. He's what we call an A-grade gatekeeper. There's certain fighters out there that are B- or C-grade gatekeepers. When you talk about C-grade gatekeepers, you're talking about fighters like a Luis Colazzo. People who are very, very tough, but they're not usually going to get past the B- or the A-class fighters. That's why Luis Colazzo, he was able to get past certain people like a Sammy Vasquez, but he was never able to get past people like a Keith Thurman or an Amir Khan, or some other people like that. But Luis Colazzo, a lot of people don't remember, Luis Colazzo actually, he actually was one of the better uh, C-class gatekeepers, you know, throughout boxing history. It is what it is. A B-grade gatekeeper is what I would call Adrian Broner. Because if you're not an A-class fighter, you're not going to get past him. But every A-class fighter that Adrian Broner has fought, he pretty much got his ass whooped against. <laughs> Whether it be Manny Pacquiao or... Whether overall it be Marcos Maidana or Mikey Garcia, you know, or Sean Porter, ironically. Sean Porter is what we like to call an A-grade gatekeeper. He's never going to be looked at as the best, in my opinion, in any division, at least more than likely. But when it comes down to it, one Sean Porter, what he is, he is a person overall that he can win some of the bigger fights in his career. Like he was able to defeat Devin Alexander and Paul Maz Nagy and of course, the biggest win of his career is that slight win over Danny Garcia. And what I mean by slight is, you know, it was a very close fight. But when it came down to it all in all, Sean Porter, like I said, we all know what he is. Of course, he has a few losses in his career, but make no mistake about it. This isn't a great fight. Sean Porter isn't a great fighter. And Sean Porter, understandably, of course, he has a few losses. But in every single one of those fights, he has taken his chunk of flesh out of those fighters. He has always been a very, very tough fighter. Sean Porter almost is like, I'm not going to compare him to Miguel Cotto 100% because Miguel Cotto at one point in time in a couple of divisions, maybe you could have claimed that he was the best of those divisions, at least for a short time. But when it came down to it, and on top of that, I think Miguel Cotto had bigger wins in his career, like over Shane Mosley and a couple of other decent fighters, you know, because Shane Mosley, he was a clear first battle Hall of Famer and A-class fighter, and Miguel Cotto was pretty much able to thoroughly outbox him. But when it comes down to it all in all, and on top of that, I thought that he was decently more skilled than a Sean Porter. But, you know, it's it's almost kind of like that. Sean Porter, he's a person to where if he were to move up a weight division or move down a weight division, I could see him having decent success. I could see him potentially becoming a three-weight division champion, you know, if he really, really tried. But when it comes down to it, he's never going to be a guy that is going to be looked at as someone that is going to be the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter. You know, he can maybe beat someone like a Danny Garcia. He can maybe beat someone like possibly your Dennis Ugas, even though I thought Ugas personally beat him in that fight. But he's not going to beat the Keith Thurmans. He's not going to beat overall the Earl Spence Juniors or more than likely the Terrence Crawfords. So we'll have to see what happens in this fight. But in my opinion, I do have to go with Terrence Bud Crawford. I think all around that Terrence Crawford has higher boxing IQ. I just think that he's more skilled. I think that he has the power to hurt Sean Porter and the power to push him back. I think all in all that Terrence Crawford has great hand speed. I think that he has very, very decent feet. The only thing that I would say about Terrence Bud Crawford is that I don't sometimes like the way that he keeps his chin wide open in the air. I think sometimes that he needs to be a little bit more defensively responsible because he does not have bad defense. He certainly does not have bad defense, but he will get hit with certain punches. And Terrence Crawford also does not have an A-grade chin. That's another thing as well. And that's why I need to really see him in this fight because many people, of course, like Dante's Boxing Nation and Aki TV and a lot of these other guys, they love to say that Terrence Crawford is the number one pound for pound fighter. And then at the same time, they love to call Gennady Golovkin, the, you know, this hype job and all sort of stuff. But what if Terrence Crawford, what if he loses this fight? What if all in all he ends up losing this fight to Sean Porter? Is Terrence Crawford all of a sudden a hype job? I wouldn't necessarily call him a hype job, but what I would say all in all is that he certainly failed the biggest test of his career. And this is going to be the biggest test of his career, at least so far in his career. So we'll see overall what happens. But I do have to predict Terrence Crawford. 
I understand where people are coming from when they say that Sean Porter, you know, that he potentially is going to get knocked out by Terrence Crawford. I see where they're coming from. I think a lot of people, like I said, I think they take a look at that Kell Brook knockout and they say, wow, you know, I think all in all that he's going to knock Sean Porter out too. I'm going to say that this fight goes to decision. I would not be surprised if it was majority decision or split decision or unanimous decision. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to say that Terrence Crawford wins by majority decision. I think that Sean Porter, I think potentially, potentially, he might give Terrence Crawford more trouble than what people originally thought. I think that there's a possibility I could see Terrence Crawford having the best performance over Sean Porter. I also could see Sean Porter giving Terrence Crawford a seven rounds to five fight. I could see it. I would not be surprised. So we'll see all in all what happens with this fight. I'm going to predict that Terrence Crawford wins this fight either nine rounds to three or eight rounds to four by unanimous decision, possibly majority decision. If there's one judge that thinks that Sean Porter maybe just did enough or maybe if they think that he had a draw, but we'll all, we'll all in all see what happens. It'll be very, very interesting. I'm going to predict Terrence Crawford to win this fight eight rounds to four. Would not be surprised if it was seven rounds to five. Would not be surprised if it's nine rounds to three. What I will say is this. Sean Porter is pretty much at the best point in his career. Yes, he has a few losses, but he's more experienced. Sean Porter was never going to be a guy that was going to defeat the creme de la creme fighters anyway. And on top of that, (laughs) Sean Porter, he's a very decent fighter. I think all in all that he's gotten some very decently big wins in his career. This is going to be a barometer test to see how great Sean Porter is, but certainly to see how great Terrence Crawford is. I think that Terrence Crawford more than likely, I think that, of course, he's going to be the one backing up in this fight. I think that Sean Porter, he's going to do what he always tries to do, Sean Porter. I'm not saying that he can't fight in a multitude of ways, but, you know, especially against those guys that are the elite of fighters, the guys that can fight defensively, you know, very, very well. He's going to try to go in on you. He's going to try to, you know, dig with with a bunch of hooks. He's going to try to rough you up on the inside. He's going to try to get to you. And Terrence does have to be careful because Sean Porter, this dude is no joke. This dude is very big for a welterweight. He's very powerful when it comes down to it. He's got decent boxing skills, and he can go for a while. He does not necessarily have A-plus stamina, in my opinion, but he's a person that you do have to watch out for. So (laughs) we'll see all in all what happens. But I got to go with Terrence Crawford in this one. I think overall, my guy, Terrence Crawford, I think that he is going to defeat Sean Porter by decision. I would not be shocked if I seen a knockout, but what I will say is this. If Terrence Crawford somehow does knock out Sean Porter, uh, I'm not going to say it with ease because I don't think that this fight is going to be easy for him. But if he ends up knocking out Sean Porter and is clearly winning the majority of the rounds, you know, like if it's in like the ninth or ninth or tenth round or eleventh round, and if he ends up knocking out Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford has clearly won, like let's say even like seventy five percent to eighty percent of the rounds, then he has to have a little bit more credit, in my opinion, than what an Earl Spence Jr. had or what a Keith Thurman had, or what a Kill Brook had. Because then that would mean that he did something that none of those other fighters were able to do. And Sean Porter, yes, he has a few losses, but I don't think that Sean Porter, I don't think that he's completely washed up. There's a few fighters that have lost a few times, or a couple times in their career, and they're never the same fighter again. Like Kill Brook, or Amir Khan. (laughs) You know, it is what it is. You know, I guess you can claim that Amir Khan was still decent when Terrence fought him, but... Amir Khan, in my opinion, I mean, let's be real. You know, Amir Khan is not usually going to beat a lot of these A-grade fighters. He's just too defensively irresponsible, and he has a chin overall made out of paper mache. So, <laughs> it is what it is. Anyways, when it comes down to it, that's pretty much my prediction for this fight. I have Terrence Bud Crawford winning by decision. I would not be surprised if I seen a knockout. But I'm very personally excited for this fight because I want to see Terrence Crawford succeed. And I want to see him debatably become the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And I think he very well potentially could be on his way. But I have to see him overall do it. We'll see what happens. Anyways, this will be a very, very interesting fight. We'll see what happens. That's pretty much all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know overall what you guys think, who you think is going to win the fight. And I'll talk to you all later.